Hello and welcome to the Houston Hispanic Chamber of Commerce program, Houston Legends. I'm Dr. Laura Murillo, President and CEO, and on behalf of our board of directors, we want to thank you for joining us here on the Cube. Today we've got a great guest. You know him, you recognize him from the Houston Astros, no other than Jeff Luna, who's the general manager for the Houston Astros. They had a great season. They're gearing up for 2019. He's going to tell us all about it. But most importantly, we're going to learn a little bit more about Jeff, things you wouldn't know, and how he became who he is today. So. Thanks for joining us. Welcome and thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be on the show. Well, Happy New Year. It's still January. I still get to say that. Yeah, for a few more days, I think. A few more days. Well, thanks for joining us and the, the partnership that you all have had with the Houston Hispanic Chamber of Commerce now. I know we uh, have been able to have a lot of, of our corporate sponsors, our board of directors uh, join you for your games at the, at the suite that the chamber has with you all. And it's been such fun to see Houston rally behind the Astros. Well, it certainly has, and the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce is really important to us as the Astros. We recognize that we live in a very diverse community, and there's a large Hispanic population here in Houston, and we want to take advantage of that. And you know, we're competing with soccer and boxing and some of the sports that are more popular, maybe in south of the border. But uh, baseball is becoming better, more and more popular here in the states and and throughout the world. Well, it is, and we see that that every game is filled now. People mm -hmm. are excited about it, and how wonderful! Anywhere you go in the city, in the airport, they're wearing their caps their jerseys, you see it all over the place. We do, and in fact, I travel with the team all over the country, and I see Houston Astros caps everywhere. Yeah. I was just in Mexico last week, I saw people wearing caps. Uh, no matter where I go, I was in South Africa last summer and I saw a couple of caps, so. Uh, Houston Astros are becoming an international brand. And that's what we want for a city that, again, is trying to attract business and make sure people know all the great things we're doing here. And with our Rockets and the Texans and, and so many other sports teams, we definitely are that uh, mecca for sports and certainly the mecca for entrepreneurship. So thanks again sure. for all of the time you all spend with us, all of your team, how vested they are in the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. And looking out in the stands, I mean, you see... So many people, I know that this is a very big market for sports, uh, Hispanics, and I know you all have tailored a lot of your uh, messaging and, and just outreach to that particular community and to others as well. Uh, the different fairs that you have before the games have been a big attraction for families. They have been, and, and we're doing the, a unique event this year. We're traveling to Mexico to play two games okay. against the Angels. Yes, in and Monterrey, I know, is one of them, right? Uh, they're both going to be in Monterrey okay. on, on the 5th of May, which is okay. a, a holiday. Yes. Uh, and we're really looking forward to expanding our reach into Mexico and having many of our fans from Houston travel down there with us. Absolutely. We need to go and cover uh, some footage there on you guys sure. and put it on one of our programs because people are so excited about it. It's amazing how many people will show up for, for training and yeah. any other opportunity they have. So Mexico, speaking of which, you were born in Mexico. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about how all that happened. Well, it's interesting. It's almost the reverse of the uh, Mexican-Americans that live here in Texas. My parents were Americans. Mm -hmm. They moved to Mexico in 1965 with the idea of staying there for a couple of years, yeah. and they never left. And I was born there in 1966 as an, as an American born in Mexico. I went through primary school, went through middle school, went through half of high school down there. Mm -hmm. um, my entire cultural upbringing was in either Mexico City or Guadalajara, the two cities we lived in. Mm -hmm. And I really felt as I came back to the U.S. for college that I didn't know exactly what I was. Was I Mexican? Was I American? Uh, did it really matter? And I know a lot of uh, Hispanics in the U.S. feel the same way, um, but it was an incredible upbringing to be able to um, really learn and appreciate everything about what it's like to grow up somewhere else beyond the United States mm -hmm. and still have that connection to the United States to me was amazing. Mm -hmm. Most of my childhood summers were spent in Texas, okay. in the Hill Country. I went to summer camp. Uh, my first baseball game was at the Astrodome. Um, so I had a lot of connections to Texas and I always wanted to come back here. Uh, but I ended up going to uh, college on the East Coast and then uh, graduate school in the Midwest and then worked on the West Coast. So it wasn't until Jim Crane offered me the job to be the GM of the Astros that I finally had a chance to move back to Texas. Where you I, belong. It really felt Texas. like this was an extension of Mexico and really yeah. my home state in the U.S. Yeah. So it was really fun to be able it's to come back here. It's a real hybrid of uh, you know Mexico and the United exactly. States. So let's talk about your parents. What did they do and what took them to Mexico in the first place? My dad was in the advertising uh, world okay. and uh, decided to take a two-year job with McCann Erickson, one of the big advertising agencies. Yes in Mexico. And then when he was down there, he realized there wasn't a good uh, publication for English speaking tourists to, to discover Mexico. So he started doing it on the side. Mm -hmm. It became more than a side project. He quit his job with the advertising agency and created a, a essentially a guidebook to Mexico. So 
us kids, there were three of us, and we had to go almost every weekend mm -hmm. to the resorts, to Puerto Vallarta, to Acapulco, so to Cancun, <laughs> to write up. My dad had to check out the restaurants yes, and see the, see if the hotels were doing well and sell advertising for the book. Yeah. So, you know, a lot, lot of my poor childhood was spent in the resorts, in, resorts. Uh, in these hotels and eating at these restaurants. But How it really fun. did expand my view of... Uh, what life is like. And uh, I saw so many from Oaxaca to Puebla to Toluca, um, Chihuahua, all the different parts of Mexico. So by the time I left Mexico to go to college, I knew I knew all these little towns. I knew yeah. every resort. You I knew, knew more town. about Mexico than a I lot really of uh, U.S. born Mexicans. Exactly. Well, what an interesting childhood. And so you come back to the United States and I know part of your career was with McKinsey right. uh, and your background in terms of education, engineering, economics. So how do you end up doing the work you do? And we're going to talk about sure. that because it's very fascinating to me right when we get back. Stay tuned. So thanks for joining us. We're back with our second part of this interview with Jeff Luna of the Houston Astros. He's the general manager. You know they had a great season, and they're coming back to take it all the way this year in 2019. And we're just learning a little bit more about Jeff, so thanks for joining us. So we were talking about your incredible career trajectory, being born in Mexico, but having parents who were here from the U.S., talking about your career, your education, engineering, economics. You were a McKinsey consultant. How do you go from all of that to where you are today? And how have you been able to apply all those skills? It's a great question. I had three careers before okay. I got into baseball. The first was as an engineer. Okay. And the second was as a management consultant for McKinsey. And the third was as a entrepreneur. I, did, I started two companies from scratch, raised yeah. money and got them going. Okay. And really, I, it was opportunistic that I got into baseball. A former colleague of mine from the management consulting world asked me to meet his father-in-law, who happened to be the owner of one of the baseball teams. Yes. And they were looking for someone with more of a business technology background to come into the front office. Okay. And I happened to be the person that they identified. They, everybody knew, has always known I have a passion for baseball. I follow everything. I know all the details. Okay. So you had a love for it. Absolutely. You understood it. You knew who was who. And so Absolutely. you had that, but then you had that business acumen to exactly. go in and make some real big changes there. And, and right around uh, the year 2003, which is the year I got hired, Owners were starting to recognize that the skill sets needed to be successful in baseball were changing. It wasn't all about having baseball experience and having played. It's also about understanding the changing world of technology and business yes. and economics. And that's why I got my shot. So I, I give a lot of credit to the yes. Cardinals for taking a chance on someone like yeah. me. Um, and I had a great eight seasons there, a lot of uh, two World Series and yeah. three World Series, actually, uh, yeah. two, one, two wins. And, and I got a chance to develop as an executive. Mm -hmm. I will say that my experience internationally has helped a lot. 40% uh, of our mm -hmm. players are born outside the United States. Mm -hmm. My experience in business has helped a lot because mm -hmm. as you're trying to figure out how much to sign players for or what to pay players, mm -hmm. uh, it's all about the economics of the Absolutely. game. Absolutely. And as an engineer, my experience with technology has helped a lot because there's more technology involved in baseball today than there ever has been. So. I didn't know it, but those three careers that I had prior to baseball were all shaping me into the executive that I and am And put you now. in that place. So let's talk about that technology. What are some of the things in your mind that have transformed baseball today? Well, I will say that uh, in the past, experts like scouts and coaches would go out to evaluate players, okay. and they did their best, and they did a good job. Then we started to get... Uh, tools like a radar gun or a stopwatch and those tools became more and more sophisticated and now we have tools in the baseball stadium that would blow you away in terms of the accuracy and the intensity of the information that we get about everything that's happening on the field and right then and there fast right, right? then and there and then you need to have uh, analysts who can analyze all that information and put it into a form that executives can use to make decisions. So mm -hmm. it really is, when we're in the world of big data in baseball, where the amount of information we have is overwhelming. Um, and so we have to hire really smart people to help us figure out what it means. And how many people are part of this team um, of support staff? I would say for an average club, probably 10, uh, 10 to 12 um, we, we're a little bit ahead of the average. We probably have about 20 people that dedicate themselves to uh, studying, interpreting, or using the information. And so you look at your career and what a stellar career you've had with the Astros. What is next for the Astros? What's this next level that you all want to attain in terms of uh, you know, the, the actual right. 
you know, Minute Maid Park, a lot of renovation, yeah. a lot of change. We'll talk yeah. about that. But what's next for the Houston Astros? Well, for us, there's a lot of teams that have reached a championship and won a championship like we did two years ago. And they utilized all of their uh, fuel to get there and win. And then they peter out after that. Mm -hmm. Our goal is to not peter out. We want to maintain success for a long period of time, which is why last year we won 103 games. This year we're projected to have more wins mm -hmm. than anybody in baseball. And we really want to be uh, win multiple championships, sure. um, like the Giants did. They won three in six yes. years. That's our goal right now, mm -hmm. and to maintain uh, a long-term relationship with the youth of the city of Houston. Um, baseball depends on the next generation, so we're doing a lot in the city to build ballparks and encourage people to play baseball because they don't always have a field or a glove mm -hmm. or a ball to play with, and so we're doing a lot of that with our corporate partners around the city, mostly in disadvantaged neighborhoods, yes. to give kids an opportunity to learn what it's like and get them excited. Because one of the things we've learned is if you like baseball as a kid and you played baseball as a kid, you're more likely to be a fan when you're an adult. Sure, well that makes sense. And the Astros Foundation has done a wonderful job of giving back to the community in so many different spaces. And so we appreciate that. Let's talk about the renovations sure. that are taking place so that when we get back into Minute Maid, uh, we can take advantage of that. Yeah, well every year, um, Jim, uh, funds, renovations, mm -hmm. that uh, we're gonna make the fan experience better. Mm -hmm. One of the things we heard loud and clear from our fans over the past couple years, and part of it's due to the intense security screening yes. going into the stadium, is that it takes too long yes. to get into the stadium and get to your seat. And quite frankly, we're not making any money and the customer's not happy at the longer you wait in line. So one of the great things about this year is we're gonna have more points to come into the stadium, great. a much smoother access, and the concourse is gonna be designed in a way that allows you to get to your seat more easily. So we're just basically gonna jumpstart the experience and let the fans get to their seat and, and have that first Coke or that first hot dog yeah. as soon as possible. Well, that would be much appreciated. Someone who's been out in the lines, <laughs> if I don't get there too early, uh, and. And uh, I serve on the Sports Authority, as you know, mm -hmm. and we've seen some of the renderings and, and know that this is just a great experience for Houstonians Absolutely. and others who come out to support our Astros. So let's talk a little bit about uh, your new you know, team. You've picked up some folks. Mm -hmm. We've lost a few people. Mm -hmm. Tell us about what the lineup's going to be. The good thing is that the Astros have returning uh, some of the best players in baseball. Jose Altuve, who won the MVP two years ago. Alex Bregman, who got MVP votes this year. Carlos Correa, who's certainly going to win an MVP at some point in the future. And George Springer is one of the most exciting young players in the game yes. uh, to go along with Yuli Gurriel and, and um, Josh Reddick and mm -hmm. Jake Marisnik and all the others that we love. Um, our pitching staff is anchored by two of the best pitchers in baseball, Justin Verlander and Garrett Cole. Um, and we have three new additions from this offseason. Aledmus Diaz, a Cuban player who used to be with the Cardinals, was an all-star uh, two years ago. He's going to be with us playing multiple positions. Um, we, we have Robinson Chirinos, a uh, Venezuelan catcher, who's going to be sharing our catching duties with Max Stassi. Um, and we have Michael Brantley, who's one of the most uh, exciting players in the game, as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. uh, he just doesn't strike out at all. He makes hard contact and okay. plays good outfield. So those three additions we think are going to make up for some of the departures. We lost Dallas Keiko, We lost Marvin Gonzalez, Evan Gaddis, some other players that have been a yes. big part of our run the last few years. Yes. Well, we look forward to the season, and we want to thank you for all that you do and the entire team over at the Houston Astros for their engagement with the Houston Hispanic Chamber of Commerce and with the city of Houston as well. Well, I appreciate your support as always. Thank you. Thanks for joining us here on the Houston Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, Houston Legends, and we'd like to thank Jeff Lunau for being among those. Have a great day. Thank you.